Here we are. Hi, everybody. Hi, Peter. <laughs> I'm Peter Donnelly, and this is... Uh, I am not Peter Donnelly. Right. That's what Peter Donnelly This is like. Ron Robin. I am. And uh, we'd like to welcome you to the Coffee House at the Muse. This is our, our regular Monday night coffee house. It runs every week from 7 to 8 p.m. Yeah. And uh, we are actually... We've been running this for 30 years. 30 years. I don't know why I keep wanting to say 31, because I'm a little twisted. Yeah. 30 years. We started this back in 1991. Yeah. And uh, uh, we've just been having a, a blast with it all these years here at the Muse Restaurant in Provincetown. I know uh, if you if you uh, send your comments and let us know where you're uh, watching from, it's kind of fun to see how far yeah. abroad people join us. Yeah. Uh, we have three guests for you tonight. Mm -hmm. Bert, Jack's... Uh, yeah, Bert Jackson. Jackson. That's it. You got it. So, uh, he's going to play some guitar for us and sing. And uh, Steve DeRoche is going to read from uh, a piece he wrote. And then we have Tiana Esperanza. Yeah. And she'll be uh, coming on. So we have three performers. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then we'll, in a little bit, we'll tell you who's going to be coming up next week. Yes, we will. Yeah. I mean, you will. Yeah. Exactly. And we have, we have uh, some sponsors that help us put this on. This is a fundraiser for Provincetown Theater and WOMR Radio. And uh, so if you, uh, we have a $5 suggested donation and uh, I see John Richardson can't wait for the show. <laughs> um, if you are, uh, if, if it's a suggested donation of $5, yeah. which we have done over the years and uh, we, we thank you ahead of time. You can uh, send that donation through Venmo.com uh, at the, at Muse Coffee House. Yeah. Hashtag Muse Coffee House. Um, and then uh, also, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Muse? Ron is the owner of the Muse restaurant. Yeah. Uh, myself and my husband, Edmund Teo, and we are going to be um, doing the open for dine in once again. Finally, yes. Yeah, dine yes. in as well as takeout. We gradually opened up last weekend with uh, takeout and uh, figured out everything that we're supposed to do. It's just so funny because with the, the changes, you know, you start out with, well, you got to close and then 25% and then 40% capacity. Now 25%. Yes, no, no, is 40%. So anyway, so uh, the restaurant looks a little different every week, <laughs> depending on how we set it up. And now, especially with this setup, uh, which is actually kind of fun to have this right here where the stage for Coffee House would ordinarily be for 30 years. Well, we didn't start out here 30 years ago, but at the old, we were at the old Muse. Yes, we've been, like, when you've been around that long, you've been in different buildings. Um, so uh, the Muse will be open what nights again? Oh, that. Um, Thursday. I didn't say that. Thank you, though, for reminding me. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from now on but also this upcoming weekend because Sunday is Valentine's Day. Valentine's we'll be weekend. We'll be open on Sunday and we'll be open on Monday night as well because that's President's Day. So there you go. Oh, great. Thank and you. John Richardson and I will be uh, hosting and featuring next uh, next Monday. So yeah. there'll be some love songs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So um, anything else to add before we start bringing our guests on? No. No. I'm, I'm ready for our guests. All right. Hey, Harry Tucker. Nice to see you as well, and Reva, I'm sure. You've probably both come under that heading. Uh, so please do. Uh, we, we love to have uh, your comments. Cinda, nice to see you. And uh, there was one there I missed right before Cinda. And Bird, all right, Ann and John from Pennsylvania. From Pennsylvania. Yeah, nice. wow, isn't this great? Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. I like Cinda. Cinda, what a great name. Cinda. Cinda. Yes, Cinda Acion. Mm -hmm. um, who is the mother of Eric, the fruit, flute player? Pete Colburn. Hey, Pete and Rita from uh, Easley, South Carolina. Looking forward to the show. All right. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, so why don't we bring on our first guest, Bert Jackson. Yeah. And uh, we can chat with Bert for a little bit, and then he's going to play us a couple songs. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Here he comes. Hey, Bert. Hey, Hey, Bert. guys. How you doing tonight? All right. We're, We're doing on. really great. Thank you. Are you on the Cape? Where are you? Where oh, are you? I'm in Brewster. Brewster. All right. Brewster, yes. Wish I was in Provincetown, but. I always thought you lived in Wellfleet, but has it been Brewster all these years? All these years, yeah. Actually, 
For 30 years, in April 30th, it'll be 30 years here in Brewster. That's, That's why cool. you could never find his house. That's Kept going yes, right. I was always looking we'll for look you. For my house. house. Yeah, he's driving around screaming, hey, Bert, yeah. where are you? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm involved with Pres Hall in Wellfleet, and, you know, my husband ran the bank in, in Wellfleet for a number of years, and now he's in Provincetown. He's running the bank here, the, the Cape Cod the Cape Five. The Cape Cod Five, yes. Yeah. I think it's yeah. just open now. Yeah. Uh, you, back you, in May, I think, of last year. Yeah, they're in their first first year, I guess. So, yeah. Yep, yep. Um, great. And um, tell now, uh, let everybody know what... You're in, are you in more than one band? Let, let us know what's... Uh... Sure. So, you know, I've, I've got a jazz group uh, we call uh, creatively the Burt Jackson Quartet. And we actually released a record last year called Light of the Sun. Uh, and that features Polly Lesniak, who I know plays with you, Peter. Yeah. Uh, Ro Osborne on bass, Kareem Sanjigi on drums. And we had uh, Fabiano De Castro on a couple tracks. He's a, a wonderful Brazilian uh, piano player. Excellent. And um, then I also play with uh, this blues group called Wicked Trio or Wicked Blue, depending on how many of us are. We found that when we added more PO, more people, Wicked Trio didn't make sense anymore. Right. Um, well, yeah, that's, so uh, that's it. Um, uh, 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 Travis, what's his first name? Chandler. Chandler Travis. I win. Yes, he's yes, got, yes. He's, he's he has the trio. trio, and it's always about five guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember there was this one guy uh, uh, who had a uh, missing man quartet, and it was three guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's ben Kashigian, uh, it was that guy. Excellent. Uh, aside from music, you've got the Cape Cod Technology Council that you're involved with, right? Yeah, so I run, you know, I'm the, I'm the chief nerd herder at the Cape Cod Tech Council. So yeah. who is or what is Baxter the Robot? Baxter, I love Baxter. So Baxter's the robot at the Cape Cod Community College. And, and he's a, he, you know, he can pack boxes and do all sorts of cool things like that and helps the, the students who are there at the college learn about robotics. It's really cool. That is, I saw a photo of you with Baxter the robot. With Baxter, yes, yes. I think I was a little thinner then. Or else, you know, Baxter's kind of big. He made me look thin. <laughs> uh Great. Well, you know, uh, we have a few folks. Uh, we just saw Gary and Laura, and uh, yeah, this is great. Oh, Marilyn, Marilyn is here! Is here. Uh, Yay! I'm Marilyn. Great. Yeah, this is this is wonderful. I'm so thrilled that you guys are doing this. You know, uh, aside from the fact that it's your 30 year anniversary, which is amazing, uh, but you know, how do we, you know, how do we carry forward with all that's been going on and uh, it's it's really a blessing to have you doing this. So thank you so much, and and also thank the fact you. that you know you're still doing it as a fundraiser for W O M R and Provincetown Theater. You know, two organizations that are are wonderful and certainly very deserving. All right. Well, thank you. And, uh, and yes, hi, Gail. It's, it's so important. Yeah, hi, Gail. <laughs> um, it is hard to keep up with all this. We're getting better at it, though. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we try to make it interactive. Yeah. Um. Uh, what was I just going to ask you? Uh, I don't you know. Know. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, this is very weird. You know, we did our sound check with, uh, with Jonathan at six o'clock. And, you know, in the old days, like if you do a real gig, you do a sound check and then you're hanging out with your buddies and you're, you know, chatting with folks who are chatting with folks who are there at the, at the, at the venue. And here, like I'm, I'm sitting around and like, what do I do? So I did the dishes in between, you know, sound check <laughs> and, and this. Yeah. And you had mentioned when we were setting up earlier that, uh, this is the first gig of the year for you, so. That's correct. That's yes. Amazing. Yeah, I, you know, I've, it, it's weird. I don't play solo a lot, and I hope that's not painfully obviously when I play. But um, you know, I usually play with a band, so uh, this is you know this is something I don't normally do. And but for you guys, I said I'm going to do it. Cool. That's great. Great. That's great. really nice. Thanks. And I see you you're playing your uh, acoustic guitar. Yeah, this is actually um, a Spanish guitar that I bought on the back streets of Cozumel, Mexico, uh, back in 2007. We were there on vacation, and there was going to be a talent show where we were staying. And I said, well, I need a guitar for that. So I went to the, this you know, crazy place in probably an unsafe part of town and, and bought it. And it's, it's a wonderful Spanish guitar. How oh, cool. Wow. Yeah, it's like it's a, a friend that goes through life with you, I always find. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like I didn't expect to to like it so much, 
and especially and with the with the pandemic, you know, I put some new strings on it. You know, it's a, kind of a thing that sits for a while in the corner and doesn't get played. And with the pandemic, you know, I've I've been playing it a lot more. I I love Brazilian music, not that I can play it that well, but um, uh -huh. I, you know, just it's just fabulous, fabulous mm -hmm. stuff. So I just love the sound. Uh, is yeah. your first song going to be a Brazilian number? Uh, it's actually my second tune will be Brazilian. Oh, okay. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. We are getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. And, and hi, David. Yeah. And hi to David. And that's uh, and that means Marilyn Colburn's watching. So yeah. that's that's Yay. so nice to see you. Yeah. So we're speaking with Bert Jackson, and um, what what I think we could do is uh, maybe go to one song, unless you have any more questions. Ron. I ran out of questions. We've run out of questions. Yeah. yeah. I'm done. <laughs> so would I would I like you to sing a song, and then we'll have you back between songs, and we'll okay. we'll chat with you a little bit before we uh, say goodbye. Sure. So this first tune is uh, it's a classic Bobby Head tune. Uh, he wrote it in 1963, I believe, and recorded it in 1966. There's some great versions out there. I think it's one actually one of the most covered songs in the world. So uh, here's here's my attempt. <laughs> Sunny, yesterday my life was filled with rain. Sunny, you smiled at me and really, really eased the pain. All oh, the dark days are gone and the bright days are here. My sunny shines so sincere. Oh, sunny, one so true. Don't you know I love you? Sunny. Thank you for that sunshine bouquet, Sonny. Thank you for the love that you brought my way. You gave to me your all in all. Now I'm feeling ten feet tall, oh Sonny. One so true, and I love you, Sonny. Thank you for the truth that you let me see, Sonny. Thank you for your help from A to Z. My life was torn like the windblown sands, and a rock was formed when we held hands. Oh, sunny one so true, don't you know I love you? Sunny, thank you for that smile upon your face. Oh, sunny, thank you for the gleam that grows from grace. You're my spark of nature's fire. You're my one complete desire. Oh, Sonny, one so true. Don't you know I love you? Sonny, yesterday my life was filled with rain. Oh, Sonny, you smiled at me and really, really eased the pain. All the dark days are gone and the bright days are here. My sun is shining so sincere, one in one so true. Don't you know I love you? Sunny one so true, don't you know I love you? Sunny one so true, don't you know that I love you? <laughs> you uh, you need to get the lighter on your iPhone app. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, all right, I'm gonna try that. Hey, that was all right. So Bobby Hebb and the song yeah. "Sunny" big hit in the uh, mid '60s, early '60s. Yeah, Bobby 66. Hebb, '66. All right, Bobby Hebb was on stage, one of the opening acts for the Beatles at Suffolk Downs in Revere. Uh, along with a circle and a local group of Boston. How do you know all this? Were you movies. there? I was there. Wow. <laughs> way, way up on some Woo. seat. And I saw the Beatles that were this big. And, oh, that's uh, awesome. What a great, uh, what a great tie in. Yes. Well, and you know, Catherine and uh, uh, Br Braden, people are enjoying that song immensely. Oh, Braden, and, yeah. Braden's think, uh, my cousin. Hey, Braden, what's going on, brother? Yeah. And Bill, uh, Bill, there was a comment about how nice your guitar sounded. Yeah. What was oh, that nice. about? Was that four key changes? 
Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was. It was like, wow, he's still going up and up and up, but it still stays yeah. within this range. It was. It was really beautiful. Yeah, you know, the, the great thing about playing guitar is it's like if you, once you know once you know the patterns, it doesn't matter what key it's in. Uh huh. <laughs> it's not like piano <laughs> or or saxophone where you really have to think about it. <laughs> I still have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that yeah, was great. great. Um, and uh, um, I was so. Why don't we move? Uh, you have a. Yeah, uh, next one. You said you had a. Do you have, you have three songs for us tonight? I right? do have. Yes, I have three. Yes. yes. Oh, I almost forgot that. So, all right. Uh, let's let's hear that second song. Okay, so this is uh, uh, one of the classic uh, Brazilian tunes. It's actually actually one of the first bossa nova tunes that was popular, and it's not the girl from Ipanema, or as we like to call it in the band, the squirrel from Ipanema. Um, so the uh, this is a, a tune. Um, the English is um, no more blues, but it's Chega de Sarad. Vai, mina, tristeza de já ela que se me la na pode ser. Tijo e no ma preci que ela regresse, porque na pois eu mais sofrer. Chega de saudade, realidade ah, que se mela não há paz, não há beleza, só tristeza, a melancolia que não sai de mim, não sai de mim, não sai. Mas se lá voltar, se lá voltar, que coisa linda, que coisa louca. Somente nós pequenos nada no mar do que os beijinhos que eu darei na sua boca dentro dos meus braços os braços a de semelos e braços a pedaço sim claro assim claro assim abraços e beijinhos e carinhos sem ter fim Que pra acabar com esse negócio de você Viver sem mim Não quero mais nesse negócio de você Viver sem mim Vamos deixar desse negócio de você Viver sem mim All right. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. And, uh, so I'll, I'll apologize in advance for my Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, either of you guys speak Portuguese? I'm afraid not. No, no that's, I'm, good. I'm, that's good. I'm, that's good. That's good. Not for me either, but I'm not. So afraid. we don't know if you massacred it or not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually, I, I do The Girl from Ipanema in Portuguese, and I did it um, at a, a show in Hyannis once, and there were some Brazilian people behind me, which I didn't know until afterwards, and then they said, oh, that was very nice, and I said, so how did I do? And they said, we understood you. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Which I suppose is, you know, it's a good start. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we see your mom and dad are, are watching. My mom and dad? It says mom, dad, Ben, Ben. Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> no, that's actually Braden's mother and, and father. Oh. <laughs> Mom and dad are my cousins, too. They're, they're, uh -huh. they're younger than me. Ah. Uh, <laughs> only Catherine. a little. Only a little. Catherine Dudley. Right. Well, Bert, thank you so much for joining us tonight and helping it's us kick this off. Uh, we've, it's been uh, a thrill. Uh, it's really great. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, what's the name of your closing song? Uh, so this is like one of my favorite jazz standards of all time. We do it in the band, um, and I love I love doing it here. I've actually done it at the Muse before, uh, and it's called "Softly as in a Morning Sunrise." All right. Well, we're going to say good night here, and uh, so good night. Thank you, thank you guys. Thanks all for right. all you do. Looking forward to uh, Steve and Tiana afterwards. Oh, all great. right. Thank you.
softly as in a morning sunrise the light of love comes stealing into a newborn day flaming like a glowing sunrise the burning kiss is sealing a vow that all betray and the passion that kills love takes you high to heaven is the passion that thrills love takes you all to hell so and story softly as in a morning sunrise the light that gave you glory will take it all away softly as in a morning sunrise the light of love comes stealing to a newborn day so flaming like a glowing sunrise a burning kiss is sealing a vow that all betray and the passion that kills love takes you high to heaven is the passion that fills love takes you all to hell so and story softly as in a morning sunrise the light that gave you glory will take it all away so softly, whoa, 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 softly, mm -hmm, softly, as it fades away. Jackson and Art Jackson. wow, that was fantastic. Yeah, very nice. Boy, that sound was just great. Yeah, yeah. wow. Thank you, Thank you very much, nice. Bert Jackson. And uh, I think you saw as going across the bottom of the screen. If you want to know more about Bert's music and uh, how to be, get him uh, uh, get more involved in that, uh, there's ways of uh, Bertisms and, and and you can find him on Facebook and that kind of thing. And Angie uh, Galliano said, uh, "Fabuloso." K K. K fabulous. I remember her. <laughs> I remember she was a fabulous there it is. queen. Bert, uh, K was, fabulous. Yes, K. K. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, lots of love out there for Bert, and you know Bert has uh, performed performed here at the coffee house over the years, many, many yeah, years, yeah. and uh, so we're always grateful to have him. Uh, so that was Bert Jackson. That was. So right before we move on to our next performer, yeah. And uh, we always, between musical acts, we sandwich a writer. Uh, but before we bring on Steve DeRoche, we just want to remind folks, if you're just tuning in, this is Coffee House at the Muse. And uh, we are celebrating our 30th year. Uh, yeah. And so we're, we're, it, we would like to be doing it live. We've been running live shows for 30 years, but uh, we, we just uh, will do what we have to do to make this work. <laughs> and so thank you for joining us and bearing with us. Mm -hmm. uh, as we kind of learn this format. Um, 
Uh, this is uh, there's a suggested donation of five dollars, and that, that is uh, helps us with our fundraising. A portion of the, those proceeds go to WOMR, the local radio station, and Promise Town Theater, uh, and some of it helps us with our expenses. And so uh, we have great news. We just uh, one of our sponsors uh, came through uh, a couple days ago, and uh, so we are going to be able to keep running the Muse Restaurant. Uh, and Dune, 1023 The Dunes has been uh, sort of sponsoring us through January and February. And uh, so we have uh, Dr. Scott Allegretti Dental Arts, the dentist office here in Provincetown. Um, they're, gonna, they're helping us out and we will be able to run uh, through March and probably a little bit into April. And with yeah. your donations, we probably can get through the end of April. So, yeah. So we're really pleased. And thank yeah, you thank very you. much uh, to the Muse and to Dr. Scott Allegretti. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's bring on our next performer, yeah. Steve DeRoche. What is he going to do? Yeah. Hi, hey, Steve. Steve. Hey, guys. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Steve, Steve is, um, let me let me figure out how to introduce Steve the best. He's my husband. So that's what I have to come up with first. Yeah. And uh, Steve, you'll, you'll see Steve's writings or hear him telling stories in many different venues. You have... Uh, you you uh, you are the associate editor of Provincetown Magazine, yep, uh, and uh, write quite a bit of the, the pieces for that. And then um, you're also uh, what is the storytelling called? Uh, I've told stories at the Mosquito Story Slam. The Mosquito Slam. I don't hear you well. Is that paper. the coffee house? Uh huh. And you are also uh, chair of the uh, board. Uh, at the Provincetown Library. I am the chair of the Board of Library Trustees, and I rule with an iron fist. <laughs> Whoa. I'd like to see that. That would be nice. No, well, it's a wonderful library, and I... Can yes, you see me now? You... There we go. Uh, yeah. Um, and... That um, I've lived here for almost 20 years, and it's, you see people over the years take different turns uh, volunteering and running things for town, so I thought it was uh, it was my turn. Well, that's great, and uh, thank you for all the time you do put in. Uh, the, and but you're also, you're kind of, uh, you've got your finger on the pulse of a lot of things. The, I think you also are on the board, not the board, but the collections committee at the museum in town, up at the monument. Yeah, um, um, the collections committee there. We've been on it, obviously, like a lot of people, a bit of a hiatus during the pandemic, but. Um, uh, uh, I know that the museum, um, with the new, relatively new director, David, they're um, sort of doing a lot of things other than just the funicular. They're sort of doing a whole mm -hmm. redo of the institution. And so um, uh, it can take a while, but we're sort of uh, assessing the collection there and um, like prior to the pandemic and seeing what the gaps were. So I know that a commitment we had just sort of voted on and moved forward on is that the museum needs to... Um, expand its collection into the heritage of the Portuguese community in Provincetown, the fishing community, as well as the LGBT community. So those were things that we were sort of working on and putting down on paper and coming up with a plan. And so when all of this is over, I think we'll be all ready to jump right back into it. Thanks. You've been a busy boy. Yeah, he's yeah, busy. busy. <laughs> all right. And, uh, but you also kind of um, follow very closely all things Provincetown, it seems. Uh, this um, um, you, you like, how, how, you know, how, how you write your pieces in the, um, for Promise Town Magazine, how you choose them. You don't, you don't yeah. just follow shows and galleries and things, but. Yeah, no, I think, um, well, I'll tell you briefly, a, a friend, a friend of mine who, all, um, I went to journalism school for a graduate school and a friend, um, who also went to the same journalism school, he's come here like um, other people from New York or Boston for the pandemic. And we've been talking about journalism. And I had a professor uh, named Phyllis Garland. Um, she has since passed away, but uh, she graduated from journalism school in the early 60s. And uh, Phyllis Garland was um, a black woman and she found it next to impossible to find a place that would hire her when she graduated from journalism school. When she finally did, um, the editors kind of handed her, um, this would often happen to women in general, but they would sort of hand them like the ladies beats, like, you know, housekeeping, you know, cooking things that were considered to be lesser, um, less important beats. And she told me, um, if that ever happens to you as a journalist, 
just because someone doesn't take the beat seriously doesn't mean that you can't and it doesn't mean you can't find incredible stories and put them into proper context and um and what happened to her is she ended up being on the founding editorial staff of jet and ebony magazines and she went on an african tour with stevie wonder um she sat in aretha frank uh, franklin's dressing rooms and i was like these are the beats they thought were important but these people of course weren't famous at the time um but that being said, when I got to Provincetown and I ended up writing for Provincetown Magazine, and I, I write about drag queens a lot. <laughs> and uh, I said to myself, just because this may not be taken seriously doesn't mean I can't take it seriously and put it into a larger context. So it's not just entertaining, it can be historical and informative. And um, journalism, good journalism is all about context. Why does this story matter? And I think that matters whether you're talking about politics or um, Barla Jean Merman. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Great. Great. Well, so you have a, a piece that um, you're going to read tonight and sometimes your storytelling or you're uh, doing mostly it's mostly uh, nonfiction that you it, you do. Yeah. And um, this piece I wanted to read, um, I, it was published in Provincetown magazine in the summer of 2018. And I thought um, I would dig it up because um, on this sort of Senate trial impeachment eve, um, this story sort of has a relevance again, and it shows you that um, all roads lead to Provincetown. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and we feel kind of proud about that here, don't we? Absolutely. We do. And I have to say, this story is one of those, for better or worse, all roads lead to Provincetown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and hi to Bill Clark. So, yeah, so, you know. um, so we're gonna let you uh, run with this story, and then we'll have you back right at the end just to to wrap up and say goodbye to you. And all and right, thank, thank you for doing this for us. Yes, so, my right. pleasure. So, thank you for asking. So, Steve DeRoche, everybody. Um, this piece is entitled "The Snarling Summers of Roy Cohn." Where's my Roy Cohn? That's what President Donald Trump asked in a moment of rage, according to the New York Times in January, when he learned that the White House lawyers were unable to dissuade Attorney General Jeff Sessions from recusing himself in the investigation as to whether or not members of the Trump campaign worked with the Russians to influence the 2016 election. Cohn is the lawyer who played a major role in the kangaroo court trial of Ethel and Julius Rosenberg that sent them to the electric chair for, ex electric chair for espionage. And of course, for Republican Senator Joseph, Mac he was Republican Senator Joseph McCarthy's right hand man during the communist witch hunts and the subsequent lavender scare of the 1950s. He's also the ham fisted lawyer for the scandal plagued Studio 54 and Trump's attorney for 12 years, becoming Trump's mentor. If Trump had asked that question in the summer over those years, the answer would most likely have been Roy Cohn is in Provincetown. Cohn first began coming to Provincetown right about the time he became Trump's attorney in 1973, defending him and his father, Fred Trump, who were under fire from the Justice Department for violating the Fair Housing Act by discriminating against African-Americans in multiple residential properties they owned throughout New York City. They settled the case with no admission of guilt after counters suing the federal government and losing. So began an oozing partnership between Cohn and Trump where the former taught the unscrupulous real estate mogul to approach every situation like a panicked gorilla, lying, litigious, and never ever admitting you were wrong. Cohn also pledged and demanded loyalty to the point of Machiavellian, Machiavellian codependency and played a devilish matchmaker introducing Trump to figures like Roger Stone and Rupert Murdoch. Summers in Provincetown at that time were a wild convention of outsiders, rebels, artists, radicals, and the working class that gave the town its heartbeat, as well as shuffling crowds of tourists that filled the streets and oftentimes scoundrels, as it was the last gasp of lawlessness on the Cape Tip that allowed its libertine culture to grow to full bloom by the 1970s. Provincetown was also a place of secrets. And in those days, without the Provincetown community space on Facebook and the like, messages were spread the old fashioned way through street gossip, drunken aspersions, or whispered warnings. But for a variety of reasons, be it for personal freedom, a revulsion of mainstream society's values, protection from discrimination, or for criminal pursuits, what happened in Provincetown stayed in Provincetown, 
long before Las Vegas turned that idea into a tourism campaign. That gave Cone cover in Provincetown as a deeply closeted gay man who reveled in slithering around the town's frenzied bacchanalia, knee deep in booze, hustlers, and hypocrisy. Something made quite evident in the 1988 book, Citizen Cone, written by Nicholas von Hoffman, who also wrote the Life magazine story, The Snarling Death of Roy M. Cone that same year. In the book, he writes, a distinction is sometimes made between being homosexual and being gay. Homosexual refers to the gender of those with whom one has sex. Gay refers to the folkways and fashions of the self-defined homosexual world. Using this distinction, Roy was pronouncedly homosexual for decades, but only seldom gay. He was, however, at his most relaxed and gayest in Provincetown, a place that had taken on an aspect of Dionysian abandon by the 1970s. Even in Provincetown, Cone would often have a beautiful woman at his side as a beard, one that was about as convincing as peach fuzz on an adolescent boy's chin. Speaking of which, locals nicknamed the ever-revolving chain of very young men, so young it raised an eyebrow, that always followed Cone his Boy Scout troop. That being said, many in current day Provincetown don't know Cone spent as much time as he did here, as he often preferred the comfort of private parties rather than hitting the town where he might be recognized or outed. His imprint on the town now is little more than a whiff of sulfur. In those years in Provincetown, Cone often did go unrecognized in a town full of all kinds of characters. But there were certainly those who remembered him from the McCarthy hearings or later for his high profile work for Studio 54, in which, which had him doing battle with the Carter administration and later trying to weasel his way into the Reagan administration via the closeted gay men like himself who were willing to turn against their own to satiate their own ambitions. In the early 1970s, Deb and Dennis Minsky were a young couple on the cusp of marriage when they worked at Ciro and Sal's, she a hostess, he a busboy. They both knew exactly who he was and what he had done. He paraded it on occasion, often without a reservation at the height of summer, demanding a table for him and his large party of young men, acting arrogant and pugnacious. Quote, just looking at him was a challenge, said Deb. I don't like Roy Cohn and I don't like what he represented. He once offered me a $20 tip, which in those days was huge. I couldn't accept it from him. I just said no thanks and walked away. There was still a substantial population of left-wing intellectuals and activists on the Outer Cape, including the Maripoles, whose patriarch Abel wrote the song Strange Fruit, made famous by Billie Holiday, and who, with his wife Anne, adopted the orphan Rosenberg children, Michael and Robert. This substantial part of the Outer Cape population also knew exactly who Cone was. Dennis recalls one fine summer day when Cone was sailing in the harbor and overturned his boat. There was a small group of old leftists having cocktails on a deck overlooking Provincetown Harbor in the East End. Custom and culture dictated providing assistance to those in distress on the water. Quote, there was a little lag time as they did, did it a bit before they did go and save his ass, said Minsky. Humanity trumped politics. Not even politics, just that he was an awful person. He just acted in a manner that he didn't care about you or anybody else. He acted that he could do whatever he wanted. In large part, Cone could do whatever he wanted. He was powerful, well-connected, and feared. A lifelong registered Democrat, Cone was the darling of the Republican Party for his ability to get it done by any means necessary. And he was the go-to legal defense for a variety of mafia top dogs like Tony Salerno, Carmine Galanti, and John Gotti. While he might have behaved in a brusque and entitled manner, he kept a rather low public profile in Provincetown, even though in the last years of his life he rented a cottage from Norman Mailer in the East End and would throw parties that attracted celebrities and power brokers to the Cape Tip. But the one antic that Cone did in the most public fashion became the stuff of Provincetown legend. Cone loved a piano bar, and Provincetown, like now, was full of them. At last call, he would rise to his feet or hop on the piano and sing God Bless America at the top of his lungs. Quote, he was creepy, 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 says legendary piano man Bobby Weatherby. He would sit in the corner and deuce at the old crown and anchor with a boy that looked like a child. He seemed so little, hunched over, just a little guy. He never made himself known until it was time to sing God Bless America. The Crown and Anchor then was a very different place than now, though Weatherby still entertains there. 
back in those days, it was owned by Stanford Stan Sorrentino and was frequented by people like Cohn and James Whitey Bulger. According to Weatherby, Sorrentino lit up whenever Cohn showed up, though many in the bar felt repulsion. By the time Sorrentino was convicted of tax evasion, Cohn was dead. Had he not been, perhaps he would have helped his friend who spent six years on the run before turning himself into federal marshals in Mexico. These recollections of Cohn often get lost in the ether of Provincetown's storied history. But prior to Trump's election, the person most responsible for renewed consciousness of Cohn is the playwright Tony Kushner, who made Cohn a character in the masterpiece Angels in America, the two-part epic play in which Cohn is haunted by the ghost of Ethel Rosenberg. Kushner and his husband spend a lot of time in Provincetown, owning a home here and walking the same streets Cohn once did. Kushner says that Trump being a, quote, blowhard psychotic narcissist and Ronald Reagan being, quote, sociopathic in some way makes it easy to see Cohn's influence and why such people would have a relationship with such a man. And with Trump in the office, it's like a shriek from Cohn's grave. Quote, we're in terrible danger, says Kushner, about the state of our democracy and republic. There's no hyperbole in saying that. Cohn was disbarred for unethical behavior and then died of AIDS in 1986, something he denied having until his dying day, even though he used his connections to get on early HIV drug trials while publicly maintaining he had liver cancer. He left this world holding true to his belief of making the lie big and then continuing to tell it. Nevertheless, he died a broken, pathetic man, bitter that even with all his power, he ended up in such a sad condition. He was 59 years old. About two years after his death, a panel that simply said, Roy Cohn, bully, coward, victim, was anonymous, anonymously sent for addition to the AIDS Memorial quilt. Quote, I was so moved when I saw Roy Cohn's panel on the quilt, said Kushner. It took me seven and a half hours to make the same point. Thanks, guys. Wow, wow. Steve, that's, um, right. that's really fantastic. Yeah. Um, I think slithering and a whiff of sulfur, say it all. <laughs> uh, a whiff of sulfur is a great name for a group, and so <laughs> is drunken aspirations. I love that one. Uh, and uh, just another thing regarding Ray Cohn, back in the early uh, 80s, he was a diner at the Muse. Oh, was he? Uh, yeah, I remember did that. Did you spit in his food, Ron? Ron? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> never. No, no, even, never. Oh, come on. No. Oh, come on. What do you say? I don't. That's, that's not even a thing. <laughs> I just swear at them. No, 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 I don't do that. Just well, uh, Steve, we're seeing lots of great uh, responses, and um, it's fantastic that um, that I, the depth that you bring to the coffee house uh, over time with yeah. these different pieces is really just great. Well, and, um, Thank you. And remember this tomorrow because tomorrow is all about the big lie. Yes. Yes. Tomorrow starts the Senate trial hearings. Yeah. Right. Well, Steve, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Thank right. you. Thanks. Love Thanks you. for being Bye. here. All right. Yeah. So. What? So we, what a diversity. We always ha have such diversity here yeah. at uh, the coffee house. And uh, we, we knew that we're having Bert and then Steve, and then we have Tiana coming up next. And it's such a diverse uh, or yeah. a spectrum of uh, perspectives. Absolutely. Um, uh, but at Coffeehouse, we never know what you're gonna have a, no. a live show. And you know, Coffeehouse runs maybe, what it can run three to four hours every Monday night. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what's who's gonna come up. And so it's always, uh, it's really, uh, yep. it's always very interesting. And uh, this these are some really great highlights too. Uh, there was one time, uh, and I think you were away for this because you don't remember that it happened. This woman came on. Uh, she wanted to be on the stage at Coffee House. What are you going to do? Uh, she said, I'm going to bake a cookie. Okay. And she had a toaster oven and she had something pre-made and she put it into the oven. And then she was talking about her cookie. And... And when it was done, she got a round of applause and walked off the stage. <laughs> that was it. Oh, that was a classic. Yeah, there's been a, uh, that's good that you, uh, re, if anything you can remember but to bring up. Yeah. I'm terrible at remembering some of these things. Yeah. Um, we, had a, uh, we had someone that sang um, jingles. He was a, a jingle writer. 
Oh yeah. And he came and he wrote. Uh, um, he sang all his jingles. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't it, remember any of them. It was but. like you know, in the army, and yeah. You know, yeah, he wrote for I don't know. If, he wrote for like McDonald's and all those. You know. Yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, we have another performer coming. Yeah, up. looking forward to this. If you're one. just joining us, we are. This is Coffee House at the Muse, and we're on from seven to eight every Monday night. So mm -hmm. thank you for joining us, and thank you all for your donations. Suggested donation of five dollars is, is really sweet of everybody. And I know a lot of you send more than that, and it helps us run these shows. We have a production company that we're paying to help us do this. It's called Live from Provincetown. And they're great. It's really fantastic. All these banners you're seeing running, it's something we just couldn't do on our own, and mm -hmm. uh, it's really fantastic. And they also put up all your, um, the, the, what, is that, what is that saying there? Ron is talking about food back in the lobster miso dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back the lobster miso dumplings. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Phil. We're working on it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, right. so we have one more performer tonight, yep. and uh, she's. Uh, I, uh, well, I'll let her. We'll bring her on, and we can talk to her. Absolutely. And not say too much more. Please bring. Uh, please welcome Tiana Esperanza. Esperanza. Hey. Hello, hi guys. <laughs> Tiana. You have a new hairdo, as far as we can remember here. Yeah. Yes, I do. I feel very chic. <laughs> yes, well, you look story. very chic. Well, wow. I always do. Yeah. <laughs> Tiana, you were performing in Provincetown, I think at the UU, and Kate Wilkinson, uh, who is going to be one of our features next week, story, telling a story. Um, uh, Kate was um, telling us there's a, this wonderful 16-year-old performer that she had, uh, ha had come in to the UU and that we should have you here. And so we jumped right on it, actually. And I think you've been performing here ever since. Yeah. Uh, at the Muse. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's like four or five years now. I think four or five. I might have even been 15 at the time. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How oh, great. And uh, so um, the, the coffee house, we've had uh, everyone from Tiana Esperanza to Marilyn Colburn and everyone in between. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just such a great spectrum. Great. Of people and perspectives, yeah. uh, of, of contributors and and points of view, it's really great. So thank you for all the time that you've uh, given to the coffee house over the years. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been awesome every year, and it's helped me grow as an artist in so many ways. So uh, nice, thank nice. You, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, that that is the thing for myself as well. I know over the years, just getting on the microphone every week and mm -hmm. learning the tools of the trade and uh, how to you know, you can only learn how to perform in front of an audience by being in front of an audience. You have to have that opportunity. You know, you, you can sit, sit at home and write songs and memorize things and practice and practice your guitar and whatever else. And Harry Tucker and uh, the folks who you get some big fans watching. Yes, big fans. And, <laughs> and, I, and I will say too that the intimacy of the muse, though, has really helped my craft. I think, I think that is specifically will will continue to help me um, because I find now if I if I perform in a bigger audience I'm not very afraid but you know I was always more afraid in the muse situation because everybody's right there like uh -huh. <laughs> hanging on to everything you say you know so um, in that way I think it's kind of the best education I've one of the best ed music educations I've got was coming up there and performing with you guys and with Frank, you know, Frank Pransky and Larry and all of them. So, <laughs> yeah, having a, a, a good listening room makes mm -hmm. makes you um, you have to, you have to when you write your songs or whatever, you have to really be thinking that people are going to be paying attention. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's great. Um, do you have no? I think uh, you came out with an album. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, just this, in 2020. Right. What, what is the name of that and how is it all going? Yeah, so its name is Afro Gypsy, and it was released July 24th. And I released a single just before that. I released Deadbeat Daddy on Father's Day. <laughs> so that was very fun. Um, mm -hmm. And since then, it's done exactly what I wanted it to. Um, I was kind of discovered and listened to by many people. It's been exciting to 
see people from all over um, listening on Spotify and on iTunes and everything. You can find it all there. Um, and since then, there's been a lot more traffic and um, more traction for me. Um, and now I've been um, getting offers from different managers and different record labels and all sorts of stuff. So it is very exciting. And um, wow. I want to say I, I love Steve so much. I love his piece he just did and him and so many other people from Provincetown, including you guys and um, WMR, Provincetown Independent have really helped to to promote the album. And I think all of that has gone towards furthering my career, which is, which is, you know, my dream. So here we are. And uh, it's just, it's kind of been amazing. So all sorts of things are happening. And uh, of course, it's unfortunate that a lot of it, I'm waiting on quarantine as we all are, to, mm -hmm. you know, we're waiting on all that, like touring can't start for a while. Um, and so many things are booked, you know, because a lot of tours weren't canceled. They were just rescheduled. So there's a lot of um, things I have to face as a new artist, but I feel prepared. I'm not afraid. And um, yeah, I just I'm excited that things are, are are on its way to where I've always wanted to go. So that's all right. Well, Bill Clark yeah. says it's great news. Yeah. <laughs> and you. Uh, well, you have you have. Even as a, a youngster coming in, you have poise, great poise. So mm -hmm. you, and um, are you finding there's anything in the um, uh, that the 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 pandemic has shut some things down, so you can't get out there and tour or whatever? But are, are there things that you're actually able to take advantage of as well? Uh, that I don't know, yeah. like songwriting and things like that. Yep, songwriting. I'm doing quite a bit of co-writing right now. So there's an artist. I started co-writing with a, an amazing um, female musician named Valerie June. So her and I started in the summer. And now I met an amazing Irish singer songwriter named Mick Flannery. So him and I have been working on stuff now. Um, and other than that, I think um, connecting with people through events like this or just on my Instagram and my Facebook, um, it's just been, it's been great to kind of hone that skill for myself. Um, and I know that there's still more room to grow in that area and more opportunity as I um, hopefully work with publishers more and um, gain more traction on social media sites. I think that's what I can do at this moment. Um, and it's actually a really powerful tool and a really important thing regardless of, of our circumstances right now. So I found, I found, um, opportunity in that way of course and considering that i can't do much of touring so yeah right. well, good right. good for you well, yes I'm anxious to hear you you ready to oh yeah okay why don't we have you um you're going to do two songs yeah maybe we could have you uh <coughs> excuse me um uh, do both songs okay um and then we'll just kind of come back have you uh, just come back so we can Say goodbye and, and see you off at the end. Yeah, All right, sure. so everybody, this is Tiana Esperanza. All right. So this song, I think I wrote about years ago now, and the first time I ever performed it was at the Muse. Um, so <laughs> very excited to do this. I always love doing it. This is called Lewis. Now this song is about a man named Lewis. Lewis H. McCaw to be exact. Now Lewis owned a little bookstore in Harlem. And one day while he was sitting in his bookstore, some black boys came in with their fists up screaming, black power, black power. He said, look, sons, I'd like to straighten you out. He said, black is beautiful, but black ain't power. Knowledge is power, sons. Cause you can be as black as a crow, 
You can be as white as snow, but if you don't know, and you ain't got no dough, you can't go in there. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh -uh. Now Lewis also said that when the white man landed here, he brought two weapons. One was the Bible, and the other was the gun. If he didn't humble you with the Bible, he crumbled you with the gun. And they're still praising the Lord and passing ammunition all over the world. Yes, you can be as black as a crow. You can be as white as snow. But if you don't know, and you ain't got no dough, you can't go in there. Yeah, that's a bow show. Ooh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Now, as I was listening to Lewis's words, I thought a couple of my own. The human collective strives to be connected. Our minds strive the respect of intellect, our souls, no regret. Our bodies, the joy of no neglect. We are constrained by societal norms born with individuality to only conform, and the cycle goes on in sync in sync. So I think what Lewis is trying to say here is, live life, love life, be smart, but take your peace, don't play your part. Yeah. Cause you can be as black as a crow. You can be as white as snow. But if you don't know, then you ain't got no. Oh, you can't go in there. Yeah, that's for show. That was Lewis. <laughs> Thank you for listening. This next one um, is a song one of my favorites called gypsy written by a good friend and the sound engineer pre-covid for um for the muse this is called gypsy Gyp it's been a while and you'll have to move on real soon Gypsy That's what you call a victim of a crescent moon Gypsy a nice word for someone who'll be moving on. A gypsy, a word for someone you love who loves to be gone. And it's a big wide world and someday you're gonna take it real far. Right now, yeah, I don't see why you can't just be where you are.
Cause where you are, if you can't find it here, I really don't know what you're looking for. And Jip, see, you love where you are, and where you are loves you even more. And I think you always cared a little too much what other people thought of you. A gypsy, never looking hard at the charms people had bought off you. And I know. You peddle illusion in your pawn off mystery. But you've got, yes, yeah, sentimental treasure from here to the China Sea. And deep down, yeah, I'm just like you and all I really want to do is roll but Jim see there's a couple of roads that never lead back home Thank you for listening. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tiana, that was, that was, that was beautiful. beautiful. And, um, and, um, you had you mentioned, had mentioned that, that uh, you co-wrote co that, that song with Alex. Alex. No, Alex Brewer. he wrote the song. He wrote the song in its entirety. Um, but he did give me artistic freedom um, at one point, and I arranged it in a way that I felt works best for me. So if you listen to his version, I think you can find it on Spotify. He had it just as the guitar and he had it a little bit faster. And the way I heard it, um, thought it would be nice to slow it down and piano and violin. So wow. yeah, he wrote, but I, I rearranged it. <laughs> that's yeah, that's good. Alex Brewer. Yeah. Alex, so Alex yeah. Brewer uh, is the composer of that that's song, and that's yeah. your rendition yeah, of it. And um, it's yeah. so nice that's to great. see the uh, the collaboration. Yeah. That yeah. Um, that you that you all you know get together and uh, pull to pull off. It's really. It's great to it's hear great. you. We miss you terribly, and uh, <laughs> yeah. we look forward to seeing you again. And this was such a wonderful taste of you. And yes. Thanks well, so much. Beautiful job, and thank you so much for helping us out with this fundraiser. Of and um, uh, we wish you luck. Uh, we we miss all, all three of our performers. We always like to tell you we, we just miss you guys so much, and and uh, we can't wait to be able to get back and have some live yeah. music, and uh, we can all be in the same room at least. <laughs> I know I read it just joined, has been joining us for a while too. Well, yeah. and next week is going to be also exciting. Uh, thank you, and uh, we will see you soon. I hope. Tiana. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Thank you, Tiana. All right. And next week, Peter. So we're going to wrap up here. Um, uh, we would like to thank all of you for joining us. And we want to. Hi, Laura. Laura. Uh, we would like to uh, thank our three performers tonight. We mm -hmm. had Bert Jackson, Steve DeRoche, and Tiana Esperanza. And of course, we had all you and your comments, which is so nice. Yeah, thank you. We're going to be back next Monday night from. Uh, seven to eight o'clock again yep and we have the grab brothers we have kate wilkinson who is going to do some storytelling and and then we have myself with john richardson donnelly and richardson donnelly gonna, and richardson we'll wrap it up so yep. uh so next week that's the three that's acts and, so we'll and uh thank you for your donations tonight uh thank you ron for giving us the space and uh all these years to uh, get everybody together. Fun for me. Yeah. And we miss Thank you all you. so much. And it's, it's so important to hear from you. And, uh, it's, uh, we're really, uh, grateful to have this opportunity to 
work with these all these creative people. Yeah. It's just fantastic. thank you so much for being with us tonight, and we'll see you again next week. Yeah, and thank you to Live from Provincetown for producing this show. All right, we'll see you next Monday night. Good night, everyone.